Hi, my name is Jeff Everhart, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to retrieve rows from Google Sheets using Google Apps Script. Lots of the Google Apps Script projects that I see people working on start with a Google spreadsheet as a base. Sometimes a Google form writes data to a spreadsheet that triggers other events, or you have a sheet that you've imported, more like a database, that you want to use to coordinate a larger workflow. So in this video, we're going to describe some different ways of getting row data from a Google Sheet using Google Apps Script, and then walk you through a couple of ways that you can process those spreadsheet rows easily using JavaScript array methods. So let's get started. To start programming, the first thing I'm going to do is open up my Tools menu, and then open up the Script Editor, and save myself a file in there, and I'll dismiss this little, this little bubble. Uh, and so the first thing that we're going to do is I'll just write um, a really easy function that's just going to grab all of the rows in our spreadsheet. Um, so we'll call this function uh, use data range, and I'll explain what that means in a second. We'll open up some curly braces, and then inside of this function, I'm going to declare a variable and call that rows, and I'm going to set that equal to spreadsheet app uh, get active sheet. And then from here, we're going to call the method get data range. And then on the data range, we're going to call get values, which is actually going to give us back the values that are in our spreadsheet. And we'll come down here and then we'll log out those rows just to see what we got. So we'll save that. We'll run our little function. And then I'll hop up in here and open up the logs. And now that the logging has been completed for our function, let's take a look at what we got back. So this is a little bit hard to read, um, but we can see that it is shaped like a two-dimensional JavaScript array. Um, and so let's, let's close this out now that we know that we've got all of our stuff back. Um, and I'll go ahead and bring in this little snippet in here to kind of explain a little bit more the shape of a two-dimensional JavaScript array and how we would use that. So this is what a two-dimensional JavaScript array looks like. Um, two-dimensional meaning that we have one outer array, and then each array item is actually an array also. So we have um, an outer one, and then each one of our rows in these functions are, are going to be returned or represented as an individual array. So for example, if we wanted to come up here and access this first row, um, we would use uh, the zero index, and this is how you access um, array indices using JavaScript. So we uh, have our rows variable, which is represented by this two-dimensional array. And we're going to open up some square brackets and then pass in an array index. And then that is going to reference something that is in our program, so or it's stored in our variable. So that's going to pull that out. So we'll go ahead and save that. And then if we run this function one more time, we should see that our logging should be just a little bit different. We can see that that worked, and this time when we logged out that, that variable, or that, that part of the variable, all we got back was the first row. So if we wanted to change that and we wanted to get the second row, we just increment our array index by one, click run again, and now our log should reflect that we logged out the second row. And so we get some additional detail there uh, specifically from the second row. Now, so that's how we would access an individual row using this, using this method. Now, if we wanted to access the values inside of a row, say, for example, we were only interested in getting um, the title, uh, I think that's what it called, the event from our, our spreadsheet data, um, we can then dig a little bit deeper. And so now what we're saying is from this first array index, which is this array, then we're going to jump into that array. Um, and we're going to pass that a 1. So that's going to say, look at the first index, so 0, 1, point to this one. And then from here, we're going to say, look at the first index of this array. So this is the 0 index, this ID. Then the first index is going to be that, that meeting or event property. Um, so we can go ahead and save that. And then we should get meeting back printed in our logs. So we'll go ahead and run our function. Click View, Logs. Whenever that log successfully renders, we should see meeting rendered. Okay, so that's a little bit complicated. Um, I know that at the beginning, working with two-dimensional JavaScript arrays can be a bit intimidating, so I would recommend spending some time um, just kind of improving your JavaScript skills if, that, if that's daunting for you. Um, but that, that's what I would re research. Two-dimensional arrays will get you all you need there. Um, so let's hop back into Google Apps Script Lane and talk about this method that we use called 
get data range and what it does. Um, so get data range is a very, very powerful method in Google Apps Script because what it's gonna do is it's gonna look at your spreadsheet, figure out how tall and how wide your data range is, and then basically get all of the data inside of that. So if we were to add another column over here called test and we were to put some values in there, um, you know, we could just put some text. Um, our data range, instead of just being this, um, what I've got highlighted here would now include all of these values. Um, and so if we come back and we run data range one more time, and I'm gonna modify this so we're just logging out rows. So we're logging out our entire data range. And then once that function's done running, we click logs we can see that we have a bunch of those, that extra data that we added included inside of our data range. So no matter how big your data gets, um, data range is going to get it all. So that's something to keep in mind if you've got a spreadsheet with tens of thousands of rows, when you load get data range, it is going to load all of your spreadsheet data. So very, very powerful, but also very, very quick to bog down in certain scenarios. So let's talk about a couple of other ways that we can uh, get row data, uh, maybe target some stuff more specifically, because you can see in this example, have a row of headers, we have um, you know, an ID that's maybe su not super meaningful, event, data, um, we've got date, we've got some stuff here that we can work with. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop back into my code editor, um, and then I'm going to open up another function. I'm gonna call this one get specific range. And then similarly to the other one, we're just gonna hop in here, declare a variable, call that rows. I'm gonna set that equal to much, much like our above function, spreadsheet app dot get active sheet. And then instead of getting getting a data range, I'm going to use a little bit broader of a, of a function, just called get range. And as I start typing here, you can see the autocomplete knows what I'm looking for. And we can see that we have a number of different options for get range. Um, we can, there's a couple of different options here where, where we can specify a starting place um, and then how large the range is, or also an option to um, pass in A1 notation, which I'm not gonna go over today. So the variant I'm gonna use is actually gonna be this last one where we pass in row, column, number of rows, and then number of columns. And so what this is gonna do is these first two parameters basically set the top left of our data range. Um, and so another interesting thing to keep note of is that when we're accessing ranges of a spreadsheet, those are different than array indexes. So this is actually gonna be column one, row one, instead of column zero, row zero, if, if, if you're thinking between uh, the mental models of spreadsheet and JavaScript array. So let's say, for example, I wanted to just get the IDs and the event titles of all of these, these fields right here. Um, so we can see right here that I'm gonna start on the second row. So I'm gonna pass in row two. Um, if I wanna set the, essentially the top left of my range, uh, that's gonna be in column one. So I'm gonna pass in one there. And we can see that <clears throat> the number of rows that I want is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll pass in six for num rows. And then num columns, we're gonna pass in two because we're trying to grab these two columns right here. Um, so we'll do that. Then we'll go ahead and add a semicolon there. And then we'll log out rows and see what we get. So come up here, switch our function, click run, and view our logs. One mistake there. Okay, so that returns us a range object. Um, and so what we actually wanna do is on this range object, we wanna call get values, because um, that's gonna then return the values present in that range as a two dimensional JavaScript array. So we'll go ahead and save that out, run it one more time, and then we should see our values printed out to the logs. Okay, very cool. And so we get back a two dimensional array, and there we see that um, e each row has been minimized. So we've ignored uh, everything in this third column, and then basically skipped our header row uh, by specifying just that that um, subset of a range that we were looking for. I think there's one more thing I want to point out before we start manipulating some of these arrays that I think is is really important to just make everybody aware of as you start working with these things. Um, so I mentioned before the difference in the way that indexes are modeled in a Google spreadsheet versus the way that they're indexed in a JavaScript array. 
And that can cause a lot of confusion for people just getting started because they're, they're not the same. And I'll give you an example that can kind of illustrate and hopefully you can see how things might get confusing. So what I'll do is I'll just open up another function and we'll call this um, get specific value. And then inside this, I'm gonna declare a variable and we'll call that value. And then get our handy spreadsheet app, not get active sheet. And then here we're gonna get a range instead of getting um, a box shape range with multiple rows and columns, we're just going to get the, t the top left most range. Uh, so that first column, first row, and then we'll go ahead and get and then call get values on that as well. Um, and so again, that, that value now should be a two dimensional JavaScript array. But let's look at how we would then read this. So say, for example, we know that this is the ID. Um, so we're getting this this top left cell here. That's what we're going to be returned. So, but say we want to grab that from the two dimensional array as, as its own variable. Um, so we would come over here and say value, and then that's going to be zero. Uh, and we'll get that inside the brackets, zero. So that first array index, first array index inside of, inside of that two dimensional array. So just sometimes it can get confusing because we're passing one, one in here to get this particular value. But then if we had a larger array to access that value using a JavaScript array index, we would use zero, zero. So it's something to just be aware of and make sure that you're aware of what data type you're trying to access when you're doing this stuff. Are we getting a spreadsheet range, which is index starting at one or a JavaScript array, which is index starting at zero. So I'm sure everybody here is smart enough to, to be able to deal with that, but something I think is, is really important to talk about um, when we start talking about working with row data. So now let's go ahead and get started um, with manipulating some of this data. And I'm actually just gonna use the, the functions that we have here to kind of show, show what that could look like. Um, so there's, a, there's two really important things that I think we should talk about. One is the idea of taking a, a group of rows and then iterating over them to perform an action on every row. So say, for example, we had um, all of these events and now that we have them in this array, we wanna add them to my calendar. So what we could do there is go use um, what's called a for each loop. Um, so that's a method of the JavaScript array. So we can see we're even getting handy autocomplete on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do rows.forEach and then that's gonna accept a, a function as a callback. And so what that does is for each row in this array, it's going to pass that particular array item into this function and then do whatever we specify in this function body. So we've got for each, we're passing it a callback, passing our row as a parameter, which is just referencing the particular array index that it is at as it iterates through the rows. Um, and then, you know what, for right now, we'll just go ahead and logger.log rows so we can see what that looks like. Sorry, row, so we're logging a singular row. So we'll come up here run our use data range function again, and then go ahead and view our logs. Okay. And so when our logging renders, um, we can see that we have a different logging statement for each row in our spreadsheet. Um, and that's exactly what we wanted to see. Um, so now we can, we can um, continue and do something a little bit more interesting. Uh, so what we could do here is we can also, in this function, pass in the index. So we'll go ahead and do this. Let's play for a little bit. Um, so we'll go ahead and amend our logging statement. Um, we'll just do some, some of this and we'll do row colon and then we'll print out the index as well, just so we can see where we're at. view our logs. All right, and so here we've got uh, the data of each row and then that the index that it was at. Okay, and so what we're gonna wanna do here is if we'll take that use case and say we wanted to create a calendar event from each one of these things. Uh, we're gonna wanna go ahead and skip what's at the zero index. So if we'll say if index not equal to zero, which is the first, that header row, then we're gonna go ahead and say calendar app dot get default calendar dot create all day event. 
and then we're going to go ahead and pass in the event as the title. So that's going to be a row at the first index, skipping the ID, and then we'll do row at the second index for the date. I will go ahead and save that and remove our logging and save that out. And I'll go ahead and run our use data range function one more time. And then that should go ahead and create all of all of those as events on whoever, whatever the default calendar is of the person executing the script. Um, so either way, that's just one of the ways that you can use JavaScript array method methods, the the for each method in particular, to process some rows after you've after you've gotten them. Um, we'll look at one more. Um, and so what we can do here um, is use the filter method. So filter method is really great for like the method name suggests, filtering rows based on a particular condition. Um, and so what this is gonna do is this is actually gonna return an array. So we'll call this filtered rows. We'll declare a new variable called filtered rows. Set that equal to rows.filter. Uh, and then this is gonna take um, a callback function where we pass in a particular row. So much like our for each loop. Um, and then what we're gonna do is test that for something. So we've got, say for example, we want to get, we want to filter to all of the rows that have office visit as the event title. Um, so we'll say event title is equal to row first index. Um, and then we'll say if event title equals office visit, Then what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna return the row. Um, and so basically that's the way that this works is if if you, if you um, and there's a couple things you could return here to the filter method. Either this could return true or um, you, could, you could return the row itself. Something needs to return from this function and then that will make sure that it is included in this filtered arrays thing when we're done. Um, and so what we'll hop down here and do is just log out the value of filtered rows once we're done. We view our logs. Now that array only contains the rows that um, are include office visit as a value of that of that particular cell. Um, so both of those are really powerful. What I find myself doing a lot is um, typically I'll get a bunch of spreadsheet data, then I'll use filter to filter it based on a particular condition. Um, and then from there, we can, since it's still an array, if then we only wanted to add the filtered rows or the office visits to our calendar, we could then call for each on filtered rows function and then row. And then in there, you know, we could do our whole calendar app dot get default calendar, blah, 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 you know, create all day event. Um, so yeah, two, two really powerful functions when used together. Obviously getting all of the data from the spreadsheet is step one. Um, then working with the, that data as JavaScript arrays is step two to help you coordinate whatever workflow you want to you wanna create after that. So that's really all I got for you all today. Thanks for watching. Um, if you want to check out um, the code in depth for this tutorial, you can find a bunch of that on my website, which should be linked in the show notes uh, on this video. Um, and also I've got a link to the Google spreadsheet that I've used as, as an example on my site as well. So if you wanted to use that to follow along or play around, you're free to do so. Thanks for watching.